sick. Okay. Um, we're just going to wait till I think five past seven just to make sure everyone can get in. Okay, if anyone comes in, then I will just admit them. But I just want to say a massive hello to everybody. Thank you so much for being a part of Claiming Your Space, whether you guys were part of the submissions or you're one of my friends who came here tonight. Thank you so much. Or you're just a student, family and friends. Thank you so much for coming and attending tonight and supporting Newcastle University with our very first Claiming Your Space competition. So I'm just going to share my screen. Yeah. This, hmm? There it is. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I think my thing just froze. I think. Can everyone hear me now? Yeah, cool. Okay. Great. Okay, so again, thank you so much for um, attending. I just want to say a massive thank you to the Inclusion Ambassadors and NUSU for helping us to set up Claiming Your Space. Um, the reason why it began was that it's just so important to have an environment for BAME students to come together and share their art and experiences. Um, I started at Newcastle University in 2018 and I'd moved from Essex, but originally I was born in South East London where it was full of so many BAME people and I just felt so loved and accepted. But when I moved to Essex, I was probably one of three black kids in the entire school of a thousand kids. And then Essex started to become a bit more diverse and I started to find more of a black community. However, when I moved to Newcastle, it's very a metropolitan area. However, I was very weary about moving up north and thinking, am I going to be accepted 100%, 110% as I am? Am I going to have to change myself? And experience oh god sorry experiences going on during first and second year finding my friends joining societies it made me begin to realize how important it is that we have our own safe spaces so we don't have to feel like we have to be someone else in order to receive validation we need to be able to be 100 percent ourselves um 
and Rohit from Inclusion Ambassadors came to me saying they wanted to start this competition and I was 110% on it. Originally the competition was supposed to be like in person so everyone's artwork would have been printed up or if it was a video projected amazing but COVID had other plans but I'm still so excited to see that so many people still submitted and so many people want to be a part of it and it's just been absolutely amazing um so I want to say a massive thank you to everyone who submitted your artwork honestly brought me to tears I was reading through your artist statements and there was just so much truth and love written into it and if there's just one thing I want Newcastle University students to know is that they don't have to be silent there's a lot of scary things that can happen inside of the university and outside of the university and knowing that you are protected and that you have a space to have complete artistic control to speak how you feel is just so important and I really hope that claiming your space did this um, for you guys so thank you for being a part of this project so um, we're going to begin by not everyone is here tonight, I think, but if you don't want to, just say you don't want to, and it's totally fine, we'll skip, because I know not everyone likes talking on camera. But if you're, when you were doing this in alphabetical order, so if when your image comes up, if you want to say just a bit about your art piece, read your art statement, say whatever you want to, this is, you've completely got the stage. So, um, Asta? Hi, guys. Um, so I'll go ahead first, I think. Um, I think what was really exciting for me to see with Claiming Your Space was to see how many people submitted something similar to me because what's really amazing about that is it does show how much of like a collective experience we all have. Um, so my experience was really just about how um, sometimes when you move to a different country or you're like a person of color and you um, have all this culture that comes with being a person of color and you come to a different country, you kind of have to sometimes feel like you have to subdue it. Um, and I personally definitely did feel that way as soon as I went um, to the UK from India. Um, but I think over time, I really came into my own and came into realizing that um, those aspects of me and those cultural parts of me will always be a part of me, whether I show it to the world or not, whether I um, like wear these dresses and whether I wear um, my ethnic clothes, um, all of that is a part of my culture and a part of who I am. Um, and so in my piece, that's what I try to reflect in um, a girl who's wearing Western attire, looking into a mirror and seeing herself as um, her real cultural ethnic self. Um, and yeah, that's, that's it. <laughs> That is absolutely powerful. Thank you so much, Asa, for sharing. Um, next, we will have Amber Lynn. Is she? Yeah. Hi. Hi, guys. Um, so my work is um, an illustration story of a princess, uh, no, 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 Prince Meteor Stone. And it's basically a story about self-esteem and trying to find who you are and accept your own special abilities yeah great thank you so much it was so beautiful thank you, thank you for sharing you. um next we have anisha I think she said, oh, yeah, she said she couldn't make it tonight. But um, yeah, if you guys want to look at her, her artwork is absolutely amazing. Um, next, we will be going on to Frida. Hi. Um, yeah, so this is like a spoken word um, piece that I put together. And I just put like a bunch of like videos that kind of... Um, went with the piece and I think it's more just my experience in um, uh, education. I've always felt like whenever um, black people came up, it was either like slavery or civil rights. And um, I think for me that frustrated me because I just felt like I didn't fit into either of them. Um, I think last year with everything going on, um, it was quite a tough year um, identity wise. And I think I just, had to just, I, I spent in this piece, I go back in um, black history from like before co uh, colonialism. And I think that's a really big part um, of this piece to just remind myself that like 
there was a before all of this happened and there will be an after. And it just kind of gave me hope with everything that happened last year. Um, and I think also it was partly inspired by, um, I'm not sure if you guys have seen it, but by, by Black Panther, if you guys, this is one of my favorite movies. Um, and I kind of dedicated this piece to um, Chadwick Boseman because that, that film was like really influential. I know it's just a film and a sci-fi, but it was like very influential for me. Um, so yeah, this, this is just kind of like a, a piece about hope um, and a piece about like, there will be an end to, in eventually, so yeah. Thank you so much, Frida. Um, we're just gonna quickly go back to Anusha's because I'm gonna be reading them off my phone heart as statement. So she said, this piece is inspired by my personal experience and the many re-encountered memories from my BAME friends. From a young age, we felt like we were silent, silently policed in our appearance, accents and behaviours to fit in and be recognised as part of a society. This poem depicts the self-acceptance that we learned to gain over our lives and hopes to offer comfort to anyone feeling different or out of place. This piece wishes to share hope and encouragement for all BAME persons to exist in their own skins, unashamedly, without any masquerades as we rise above and defy unspoken norms. Absolutely beautiful. Um, next we'll be having half. Oh wait, no, she said she couldn't be here tonight. Okay, let me read hers as well. Um, so Hafsa said, this is an acrylic painting on a canvas which I created. And my inspiration was the artist Antoinette Anton Stevens and the aspects of human emotion. It is my proudest piece that I've worked on and completed alongside my other art pieces. The theme I was aiming to replicate was fragmentation, symbolizing hidden emotions which can be unstable yet uncontainable. I painted this piece with the feeling of the inner conflict and turmoil. This is reflected between the splitting head and expression, expressing fragmented anger and frustration. So next we'll be having Herbert. Natural, yes. Hello, yeah, I'm Hi. Natural Langdon, how Natural. you doing? Uh, yeah, this is my piece reflecting um, some of the communities that ha I had a chance to connect with in Ethiopia, Nigeria, Haiti, Brazil, um, Cuba, and just connecting and showing that, you know, we are one people. A lot of times we get separated by, you know, politics and um, uh, false narrations. And I just want to show this piece and say like, my whole mission and goal is to show that, you know, we're one people and um, we're beautiful people. So thank you for having me in this space. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, and your artwork is absolutely amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next we have Julian. Hello, yes. Yeah. So um, for this piece, I was really inspired by the recent um, winning of uh, Sir David Ajayi's um, Reba Gold Medal, and also sort of highlights the sort of minority group in architecture, or um, like mostly like the, uh, the BAME groups, and how sort of we don't really um, see ourselves um, in the sort of presentations and um, when we like submit portfolios. So all those sees our names, but they won't actually see like who is behind the name and obviously the minority groups are kind of like most of the, the, the um, make up most of the school as well and um, but especially black students um, are quite few in the architecture um, aspect so I was inspired to sort of show the process behind one of our study pieces um, well it's just a really small part of our research which is just studying um, um, a precedent so it is like a key part in sort of understanding the process for our design. And I thought instead of just showing the process without the the artist or the architect behind it, it's sort of interesting to see the hand behind the drawing and the, the process along with that. Great, thank you so much. That was an absolutely beautiful explanation. Um, next we have Precious. Would you like to share? Yeah, hi everyone. Um, this piece, similar to other people, is a self-reflection of myself 
and um, it's basically two versions of myself and it's kind of like a conflict between which version like I'll show in a day to day. Um, I grew up in a predominantly white area. So like when you grow up with a lot of white people, you can tend to like, you know, share the same characteristics as them. And then moving again to like a black area where a lot of um, different cultures, you begin to realize like, oh, like these people, you, you begin to realize similarities which you didn't know you had before. So then you begin to be in a conflict with which version of yourself is really true. But um, then it's just a decision that everything within myself is who I am and that I shouldn't decide on like which version I should show of myself because everything within me is like, yeah, true to myself. So it's basically just a reminder and inspiration that you don't have to change your personality in your environment, that you should just be who you are. And then, yeah, that's the main, main reason. Thank you so much. That's so beautiful. Um, next, we will have Reza. Hi, um, my piece is quite similar to a couple of previous ones that we've already seen. Um, this illustration shows me wearing a lab coat, which represents the degree that I'm currently studying, which is engineering. And I'm looking in a mirror of me wearing traditional Indonesian clothing and the shelf besides it showcases some things that are, are like important to me in my daily life. So through this illustration, I wanted to portray a message that describes like the feeling of loss of identity that's often felt by first generation immigrant children. Because since I've since I was born in Indonesia, but I've grown up in the UK, um, I never really felt like I fit into either British culture or Indonesian culture. So like, I always felt like almost like an outcast in society. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and your artwork is absolutely amazing. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, yeah, thanks. Sadia? Hi everyone. Um, so I came to Newcastle Uni as an art student back in 2016. Um, and my art had always been really culturally influenced. Um, and that always came across really strongly. But when I came to uni, um, there, are, there weren't many um, kind of people that looked like me in my course. Um, and just the task of talking about race and talking about culture in the kind of climate where we were, we were always taught a lot about art history from like a kind of white male perspective. It was just, it seemed like such a mammoth task. Um, and I actually ended up changing course and I'm studying chemistry now. I've nearly finished. Um, so taking part in this competition was just really exciting because I got to talk about what I really love to express with my art. And so my piece kind of is showing how the henna on the hand is really beautiful and that's kind of symbolizing my culture but the other hand is um, covering it slightly to kind of show that despite how beautiful it is I still almost want to hide it away and yeah that's what I wanted to talk about with this. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Um, next I believe we have Sri. Is she here today? Sorry, I should have written down a list of everyone that said they couldn't attend tonight. <laughs> some people are ill, some people are getting their vaccines. Um, okay, I'm just gonna read off hers. Okay. Microaggressions are the lived experiences of every person of color. Expectations, anticipations, and responses to people of darker skin are the inherent bias that exists in society. The remnants and active continuation of centuries of white colonialism that chains us to this day. Unless people are learning, are willing to unlearn this toxicity, we will never go further into a future that treats people of color the way they deserve. Breaking this chain begins with understanding racism in all of its facets. Not just the man who screams profanities, but the colleague who believes color doesn't matter because it does. It always does. That's absolutely beautiful. Um, Tyra? I know if you said Tyra. Yeah, I saw his name. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Hi. Um, yeah, um, when I was uh, deciding what to submit for the competition, I 
I really thought to write something about uh, how I felt as a black person being, uh, being, uh, you know, kind of stigmatized in in the UK because I, I just came into the UK like six months ago, October last year, and uh, but I, I decided to write something else, and and what I'm writing is is about how how I feel about my purpose here being in the UK. I, I feel like I should, um, in the UK, I, I feel a bit free than back home in Nigeria, because there's a lot of things to enjoy, a lot of freedom, more more rights, more, more liberties. And um, I feel like I can hold on to those things and and lose myself along the way. Yeah, so I, I wrote this to tell myself to keep things in line and keep myself in 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 on the road really and not get sidetracked and yeah keep myself on the journey to purpose yeah that's it great that's amazing thank you so much um next we have tanisha so she couldn't be here tonight but i will be reading off hers so she said my name is tanisha and i'm nigerian malaysian and white I've often struggled with finding a true community and a sense of belonging in terms of my race. I've dyed my hair blonde and straightened my curls for many years so I could fit in. Although I'm proud of my heritage, this is a struggle I've faced and was always too ashamed to talk about. I'm now hoping I can embrace the three, my three African and Asian roots and I hope that this shows. I think my thing might be popping. Yeah, so this is Tanisha's, it's really beautiful. Um, and next we will be having Zina. Okay, yeah. I think Zina couldn't be here tonight, so I'm going to read hers. So Zina Aga is a Palestinian Iraqi writer and poet raised in London. The poem Safe comes from her poetry manuscript, Objects from April and May which was a finalist for the Alice James Book Award in 2020 and the Om Omnidon First Second Book Prize. It was written at the Millay Colony, Colony for the Arts in Hudson, New York. The title serves as a dual purpose. It plays with the theme of safety in English while being a translation, transliteration of the word for sword in a classical Arabic. So that actually, I believe it completes um, all of our amazing submissions. I just want to say before we go into the winners tonight, thank you so much for everyone for submitting. And like, you guys have no idea how talented you guys all are. Honestly, just please keep on creating art. Please never stay quiet. And you have no idea, like, I'm sure there are so many students who have seen what you guys have posted and just feel so seen and so safe. And hopefully we can keep this as a continuation, a continuing project because I think more students should be able to apply for this and have this safe space as well. Um, so next, yes, okay. So, oh, cool, okay. So for our student vote is, Enjoy first place, Aston Amber. So <laughs> congratulations, guys. Um, you guys, like, honestly, it was so close. Like when George sent me the, the list, I was just like, oh my God. Um, but you know, you two produced some absolutely phenomenal pieces of work and absolutely stunning pieces of story. Like, honestly, I was reading my mom, I was reading Amber's story to my mom and I was just like oh my god someone actually wrote a book for this like this is so amazing and I was showing like all my family members like Astas it was just that duality that I think all of us can really just connect with and I'm really really hoping that you know we find that sense of peace within ourselves because the UK is moving mad and we really deserve that kind of space to just be like I want to be me this is who I am take it or leave it um, but well done, amazing, 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 amazing. Thank you so much, Aston and Amber for submitting and congratulations. Um, so next is our judges votes. So our judges consisted of Anna. So I'm gonna read off just a bit of 
information really, really quickly before we get to our judges' votes and then the competition's over, unfortunately. But um, so Anna, Anna is from Chile and moved to Newcastle studying media and communications. And Carl, who was born in the Philippines, moved to the UK seven years ago and studied media. We actually studied together. He's absolutely amazing at films. Make sure to check out all the judges' profiles as well, just to get to know a bit about them, because I'd love to meet all of you guys. Then we have Chantelle Herbert from Sister Shack. She is born and raised in Newcastle, and she has an amazing platform for women of color in the Northeast called Sister Shack. Then we have Cynthia, who studies medicine at Newcastle University. She's also the vice president of ACS Society and has her own hair salon. Sick. So then we have Georgia May, who's a neo soul vocalist, born and raised in Newcastle upon time with Nigerian roots. Um, Jean Claude, who is a postgrad medic from London, who absolutely loves being able to speak multiple languages and engage in artistic crafts. Then we have Marion, who is a fine arts student at the university and also studies multiple disciplines and engages in multiple disciplines of design, fashion, styling, and creative arts. Then we have Nanda, who just finished her MA in International Multimedia and Journalism. Um, we have Rabs, who is here tonight, also one of my best friends. Um, she, they are president of the LGBTQ society and they put on phenomenal events. Like, oh, Rabs is saying hi. Um, and so grateful to have you here tonight. Um, then we have Victoria. Victoria uses they, they, she pronouns, and they are very passionate about uplifting Black voices, as particularly in radical race theory. Then we have Xavier, who is a film study, film, final year film student at Newcastle University, and Zini, who graduated from Northumbria University in geography and is also an amazing photographer. And oh gosh, we have two more. <laughs> we have Alex, who is a third year culture kid. He's a third culture kid, right, born and raised in Hong Kong with English and Filipino nationality, studying architecture. Um, and we have Dorothy, who was our president of Newcastle University, did an absolutely amazing job, put on some absolutely amazing um, competitions and events. And then lastly, me. So yeah, I'm a, a media film and business student, um, been here since 2018 and just um, a cultural creator, photographer, anything to do with art, I'm absolutely obsessed with. So anyway, Enough about the judges, let's get to the winners. Um, so our judges vote was very, very, very close. Let me tell you this, it was by one vote, um, the first and second place. So in first place is Precious. Congratulations. Um, yes, honestly, I think we can, like again with Asters and so many other people's work, we can just kind of very much relate to your piece of feeling that duality and wanting to think, who am I? Who should I be? Who should I present myself as? And it was just absolutely so powerful. Um, so that was our first place. And second place is Hafsa. So Hafsa couldn't be here tonight, unfortunately, but we really felt that her connection to wanting to show this powerful powerful emotion through her heritage and ancestry through art was just so moving and we absolutely loved it we absolutely loved every single submission honestly it was so hard I had judges changing their votes now and then being like I don't know who to pick judges not being able to vote until like an hour before the <laughs> award ceremony tonight because all of your submissions were just so phenomenal um and we are just so honestly grateful for you guys for submitting. And I honestly, every single submission made me cry. Every single artist statement moved my heart. And I really hope that it did so many for you guys as well. And that hopefully, fingers crossed, we can have this as a continuing competition because I would love for anybody wanting to submit again or have new students, the freshers or any other students be able to take part in this because we just deserve to have loads more artistic safe spaces. So I just wanted to say, before we go, does any of the winners want to say anything before we go? Maybe I'll just take a second to thank you from all of us for setting up this competition, because um, it's been so great. It's been such a nice platform to have, um, not just for us to share our own experiences, but to see everyone else share theirs and then see how much similarity there is. So. Good job, Dami. <laughs> You've done great. Um, and surely, like, would love to see this, like, continue on for more years to come. Great. Thank you so much. Honestly, <clears throat> um, it's just been so much fun putting it on. Like I was telling my mom, I'm just kind of sad now because it's been 
since November 2019 that this has been planned and it's really sad to see it hopefully not end because it would be great if this could continue but like because of all the work that's been going on it's really sad to see it go but um does anybody else want to say anything before we go anyone can say anything honestly anybody no not just the winners anyone can say anything um yeah I just want to say thanks for everyone that um encouraged and yeah have supported one another and thanks for voting as well and yeah I think it's a really good thing I definitely want to see it continue and hopefully like more people will join and yeah like collab with one each other as well could be really interesting so yeah thank you oh my god yes if you guys like honestly all your artwork is on the claim your space page that's going to be up for a very very long time so if you guys want to collaborate make more art and you want it to be shared on that page as well any collaborations you do message me I can post it for you because I just want to keep on sharing your art so even though for now the competition is over if you have any art that you just want to be tagged I will repost it and yeah we just need to keep on sharing your artwork um does anybody else want to say anything before we end yeah I really hope that it continues it was just so amazing to be a part of it and to see everyone else's work and honestly I don't think I've ever felt so seen um just like looking at everyone's submissions and just really being able to relate to it. So it's, it's been such a great platform for us to you know, have our voices heard. So I really appreciate it and well done to everyone. It's been amazing. Yeah, I really hope that it continues. Yes, bombard new Sue with emails. <laughs> Cause I, I, honestly, I, I'm, I'm really hoping that it does continue. And I think with everyone hopefully returning back to campus properly this September, I think after the year we've had with everything that's gone on we need it so I'm just really hoping that it can continue um natural said thank you great job I really enjoyed everyone's work and rabs they said everyone's artwork was so moving and amazing I really struggled picking yes yes it was really hard trust me I had a very hard time I was yes honestly in my book everybody I know everyone hates it when you say everybody's a winner but like honestly <laughs> Um, it was so hard to pick everyone's artwork was just so amazing um, so before we close just saying thank you again thank you so much for everybody being a part of this um, but yeah let me stop sharing great okay okay before we before I literally click end and everybody can go um, is there anything anyone wants to say okay cool great okay Again, thank you so much. Um, to the winners, I will be contacting you about getting your bank details and um, addresses so we can send you your artwork professionally printed. Um, and to everyone, thank you so much for being a part of this. Bombard Nusi with emails so we can get this again. Everyone is el eligible to, re um, to re enter again, hopefully, if we do this project again. Um, and yeah, just have a wonderful evening, a wonderful life. And remember to lift your voices. Everyone has. Everyone is an absolute warrior and your artwork is phenomenal. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank bye you. everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye, bye. Dami. Thank you. Thank bye. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.